Okay, today we're going to demonstrate to you the latest features of Grail 3.1 Milestone 2, which has just been released. Uh, one of the new features is around profiles. So, profiles in Grail 3.1 are essentially a way to define the structure and features of an application development environment. Um, so, uh, and in Grail 3.1, these are much improved with things like profile repositories. Um, custom profiles, uh, a create profile command for creating your own profiles. So one of the things you can do in Grail 3.1 is um, essentially make an empty directory, cd into it, and start up Grails straight away. This will start Grails in application creation mode. Um, so if we hit tab, you can see that I've got various commands to create an application, create a plugin, or even create a profile. Uh, we can find out what profiles are available to us with the list profiles command. Uh, you can see that these are the currently available profiles. But now that with Grails 3.1 profile repositories are supported and uh, the creation of custom profiles that anybody can publish, I anticipate this list will grow significantly in the future. If you want to find out more about a particular profile, you can use the profile info command. Uh, and type the name of the profile. And you can see for the web API profile, we can see a description of the profile, the commands it provides to the development environment, and the features it provides. We'll talk a little bit more about features um, in a moment. Um, so let's try and create an application then. So what you can do is type create app and hit tab to complete that. And then uh, you'll notice that the create app command um, supports the following flags, one of them called profile, and this allows us to select the profile that we want to use. So I'm going to choose the web API profile, tab again, and you can see now there is also a features flag. So uh, if I tab into the features, and you can see that there are two features available for use with the web API profile, they are Hibernate and MongoDB. You can combine multiple features using comma, separate, comma separation. In this case, I'm just going to use the Hibernate feature and that'll set up my project using Hibernate as a backend. Um, and I'm going to run this command and see what we get. <coughs> so that'll essentially create the application inline in my current um, console. And you'll see that if I hit tab now, we have a, a commands that relate to the application. If I also open this up inside of an editor or an IDE, uh, you'll see that my application has been created uh, using the web API profile. And um, you can see that we have um, a set of dependencies that are specific through the, to the creation of REST web services. And also a set of commands inside here where you can see create domain resource, uh, generate, create RESTful controller, commands that are specific to REST applications. Uh, so let's um, create a domain class um, like we would traditionally do in any Grails application. And um, if I open that up, add a few properties to it, and now run, for example, generate all, you'll see that the app views that are generated for this domain class are JSON views. So this is, again, as you can see, in a normal Grails application, you would get GS GSP views. But because we're creating a web API, uh, GSP views are not as useful as JSON views. So JSON views essentially allow us to render um, JSON responses uh, to the client. And if you have a look in here, we can see an example of a JSON view that takes our book and just renders it using the g.render method, which essentially will just output all the properties. Uh, but you can customize this uh, JSON rendering process using Groovy's JSON builder syntax. Um, it's all rather trivial. And you'll also see that we have two other views an index.json, uh, which renders a list of books in a JSON array uh, using that same template and a show.json uh, which again uses that template 
to render um, the JSON for a particular book. So I mentioned before that um, Grails' profiles are not extensible and we support repositories and so on in Grails 3.1 and 2. So let's have a look at a demonstration of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a directory called my profile and cd into that and then start up Grails. And I'm going to use the create profile command to spin up my profile. And here we go, I have a profile. So uh, as you can see, the profile, uh, the create profile front created a application template for the creation of profile profiles. And we've got a set of um, commands here that are specific for helping you to create a, a, new, a new profile. So what does a profile look like? Let's have a look. So as you can see, it's uh, just a regular build.gradle file um, and uh, uh, set up to be published um, to bin tray as, as, uh, as necessary. And uh, essentially what you have is a directory for the commands that the profile provides, a skeleton directory where you can add additional uh, templates that get copied into the application tree when the application is created, a templates directory which can be used in conjunction with commands for code generation, rendering, uh, for example, um, creating controllers or generating um, scaffolding templates or anything like that would use templates. Um, another thing a command can do is define dependencies within build.grid. So if we look in here, down at the bottom here, right at the bottom, you can see that um, we have a runtime run dependency on the base profile. But if we wanted to build on, for example, a web API profile to extend it and provide additional features, we could change this to web API and now we, we, we have a dependency on the web API profile. This essentially becomes the parent profile. And what is a parent profile? Well, this profile, since it inherits from Web API, will essentially inherit all of the commands from the Web API profile. And also when the application is created, it will use the skeleton from the parent uh, when creating the application. You can um, create what are called features uh, using the create feature command. So for example, if I wanted to create a MySQL feature, which uh, you could optionally include MySQL, um, I can run that here and you'll see that inside the features directory we get a MySQL a feature with a feature.yaml. You can describe uh, what the feature does, uh, provides MySQL integration for example. Uh, then you can um, uh, then you can essentially define a set of dependencies here that get included in the application when the feature is used. Uh, so, for example, I could put the MySQL driver dependency. I don't know the exact version, but you put it in there. Um, and then when my my feature is used, it'll get uh, my, uh, it'll get this dependency will be get included in the application that is eventually created. You could modify the skeleton. For example, you can come in here and modify the application YAML to to include um, default configuration. You can also do the same thing for the feature. So inside the MySQL feature, for example, I could come in here and modify the application.yaml to include a default set of MySQL configuration that is shared whenever this feature is used. Um, so that's essentially creating profiles. Once you have, um, once you have uh, created your profile, to, you can publish it using Gradle public uh, install to your local Maven cache. Once you have installed the profile link to your local Maven cache, you can use the create app command to create a uh, new application called call it my demo using your my profile and the features including MySQL and maybe Hibernate. Hibernate as well. Um, hit enter. And if we open that up, you will see that if we look at our build.gradle file, uh, you have that my 
MySQL driver from the MySQL feature that we added. Um, and we have the customized settings from my dedicated profile inside our application uh, .yaml. And you can see that the profile that we're using is called uh, my profile. 